Hey guys, Steven here, Fanatic Perspective. Got my buddy JP, aka Andy Sooner, on. You know, and you know, JP, you know, I appreciate you coming on here, brother, after the shellacking that was hap- that happened in Dallas, man. And um, in all seriousness, though, it's great to have you on the show. You had me on with you and Travis um, on the JP and Trav show before to preview the Red River Shootout. So it's appreciated to have you on here today. How you doing? Man, I'm I'm good, you know. Like you said, you know, uh that that, that was just a lacking that happened in Dallas. And uh, you know, I'm not one to I'm not one to hide face. I I told the people on Twitter, hey, I'm I'm here to answer every question, try to answer as honestly as I can. Um, that's something I even talk talk to you about with you when you're on the shows. Something I respect about you is I think you're the same way, you know, the takes we make, you know what? Um people are gonna say what they're gonna say. And if we're wrong. We own up to it. We eat our crow and we move on. I'm not, I don't do none of the ducking. So we don't duck out here. We don't <laughs> duck. It's, it's tough too, brother, because we, I, you know, that's, that's the life of, of being a college football fan. One minute you're up, the next minute you're down. And now I'm going into a bye week with a blown lead and, and shaking my head because we probably not going to make it back to Arlington barring some, some things happening outside of our control. So I'm going, now I got, a week and a half to stew on a loss and I'm down. Right. But so that's, I can't run, you know, we always hear, and I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, Before we jump into, uh, we're going to talk about your NFL team and your brand new QB one general Ellinger, general Samuel George Ellinger, AKA Sam Ellinger is is now the starting quarterback of the Indianapolis Colts. And we're going to get JP's take on that and kind of talk about, just our lives as fans of being college fans as well as NFL fans and yeah. how it relates to players. But I also want to give a shout out to, to everybody that supports this channel. It's free to show love. So hit that like button, subscribe, subscribe to JP and Trav show on, on YouTube. I will have their link and contact information in the description as well as the comments below. So y'all can go over there and show them some love. Also our sponsors, BUSR, BUSR.com slash fanatic uh you know even though texas has a bye week it's a great week big 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 games in the big 12 we got oklahoma state going to manhattan going to kansas state a lot of us texas fans our next opponent being kansas state we're going to be doing some scouting the opponent we just played versus k-state you can bet on there tcu west virginia uh jp just looked it up ou at iowa state he looked up the spread it's what one and a half uh, Iowa State minus one and a half. Mm-hmm. So if you're an OU fan out there and you're feeling like, hey, we're going to go into Ames and get a dub, if you're looking for a reliable betting partner, hit up BUSR, BUSR.com slash fanatic. Our promo code right now is Sports100FP, 100% free play match, actually 150% free play match, all initial deposits within the first 24 hours, and we're going to give you 25 free casino chips as well. And I want to give another shout-out to our other sponsor, and and brand new to the channel, Last Stand Hats, laststandhats.com slash fanatic perspective. I got my Last Stand hat here. Got another one here. Great designs. Tran got one. Um, I, and y'all already know I got the all gas, no brakes drain as well. Polos, hoodies are coming. Texas basketball merch is coming. Basketball starting next week. So very excited to, you know, baseball, you know, already all of, all the left field gang out there. So Hit them up. Use that Fanatic 10 promo code. 10% off at checkout. We'll take care of you there at Last Stand Hats. JP, so what are the Colts post-Andrew Luck cursed? Like, what's going on in Indianapolis? Dog, look, I was telling somebody this the other day. For me, it all starts with Ryan Grigson. Okay? okay. Ryan Grigson, our, our previous general manager. Now, Chris Ballard, as talented as he is, um, I think has his faults in roster management. I think he has a, a, a keen eye for picking out talent draft wise. Um, but I, I don't know that we've been able to see him have great roster management. Um, and I'll get into that a little bit later. But the reason I say Ryan Grigson is the issue of why we're where we're at is because if Ryan Grigson focuses on building the offensive line around Andrew Luck instead of trying to get you know, just a ton of skill players uh, when we didn't have a good offensive line to begin with, not even a decent one. Um, 
And then we our defense was was not very good as well. Um, Andrew Luck carried us the first three years of his uh, career, right? I mean, it, it was some legendary, honestly, type stuff, especially coming off of a two and fourteen season and trying shoes. You know, he did the best he could, and eventually, you know, he he's getting injured so much he had lacerated spleen. Like, I mean, he he's got war injuries on the field. And so, you know, finally we, we get we get right. Finally, we get um, a, a general manager who's worth a snuff that knows what he's uh, going to be doing, uh, how, how to protect his quarterback, uh, how to at least put a winning product on the field um, without injuring your star quarterback. And Andrew just said, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. And I was I was at Lucas Oil Stadium the night he retired. I was there. And I felt bad, and, and, and it was – I'll never forget that reaction in, in Lucas Oil with the some of the boos and, and things that were happening because it was so shocking. It yeah. was so shocking when that happened. So yeah. what – but but transitioning – I mean, Phillip Rivers comes and fills in for a year, and, and you know, you guys go to the playoffs. So Phil uh, – Uncle – I call him Uncle Phil because uh, he's just – everything about him is just fascinating and old. But Uncle Phil comes there, holds it down for a little bit, and it's been this this cycle between Carson Wentz and the yeah. trade. So now you have the money ramifications because you get Matt Ryan and the trade for Wentz. Can you explain this to me, why there's frustration? Yeah. Because I, I feel like there's a lot of Colts fans that are frustrated that you're already moving off of Matt Ryan. We yeah. are with the financial ramifications. I, and I, I want to have a better understanding of that. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I, I broke it down for actually another Texas fan on Twitter, I think yesterday, because he said, well, you know, you would be singing a different tune. And I was joking around like, Oh, I'm going to have to cheer for Sammy. E. Here we go. Whatever, whatever. But in all honesty, like I, I do like Sammy. E. I've always liked his heart. Um, you know, and, and I think he's a good dude. He just goes to my, went graduated from my rival school. Right. And so that's natural. It's just like, you know, you guys hate Baker Mayfield, right? It's, a, it's the same type of thing, deal. Um, but anyways, Sam has proven himself as getting better every single year. He just has. And you saw that in preseason. I get it's against third and fourth stringers, but he's still making plays happen. And he looks better than he did at any point in his Texas career. Um, I and so I, for me, I'm just like, hey, you know what? Just because you're one way does not mean you have to stay that way. I mean, look at Jalen Hurts. Right. So if Sam's going to give us the best chance to win, great. But here's my frustration because he's like, you know, if you're if you're OU fan or if you were a Texas fan, you'd sing a different tune. If it was an OU guy, you sing a different tune. Um, you know, you're miserable and you're saying it's on management. And I'm like, no, it's not about it's not even about Texas. I was like, it's it's the fact that we mismanaged our we have mismanaged our quarterback situation so bad that we are paying a guy twenty four million dollars this year. 24 million to put him on the bench in week seven, dog, for, for Sam Ellinger, who's making 800,000. He's making 800,000. So let me break it down for y'all. For me, I would have just kept Carson. I really would have, right? Because Carson was doing performing better than this. You can tell me all you want about the leadership stuff and locker room, whatever. I, at least we're winning games, you know, and I know that he had some games where he just made stupid decisions. I get that. But this is better than. What, what we're going with now. Now, mm-hmm. will Matt Ryan be the doubt that the offensive line hasn't been great? JT's been hurt. There's a lot of things going on, but you brought Matt Ryan in because you felt like he was going to give you that next step. I never believed he would, to be honest. I said he's too old. I said that. But everybody was like, oh, it'll be fine. It'll be cool. So, anyways, we, we get into this position where I would have just rather said, let's go with Sam from jump. Right. Go with Sam from jump and this right, and don't even do dollars. the money. Yeah, you know what I mean. If that's if this is what we're gonna do this early in the season, why not just go from Sam with, from jump, see what we had in him for a year, which is what Jim wants to do anyway now. And it's Jim Ursa who's making the call because he's like, I'm sick of putting a bad product on the field for my fans. And as much as like you know, Jim's kind of crazy. He's loved around Indianapolis because you know he he wants to do the best for the city of Indianapolis and for the Hoosiers. Of the state, and he hates putting a bad product down the field. And he's going to make for sure better or for worse. He's very transparent with yeah. the community. I feel like 
No, he is. Exactly. Like you said, for better, or for worse. He He's like, you know what? At the end of the day, we need to make things happen. And, you know, again, sometimes you can be too mentally. I get that now. He's not Jerry Jones type of mentally. Um, <laughs> I know you know all about that. Uh, but, yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, I at least can respect that he's like, listen, this is not this is not acceptable. We told these fans because he did. He told us at the end of last year, we owe it to you after Jacksonville to put a better product on the field and to bring back coach football. And this has not been that. And so he's like, you know what? I'd rather at this point go with an unknown commodity and see what we have in him. And if we don't have none, we'll just draft a quarterback at this point because we've been through the gauntlet the last three, four years. But again, we're just frustrated because do that at the beginning and spend money on, on the pieces that, you know, we do, we needed, right? Like, and, and one more thing real quick, I will say, I, I do wonder how much of that they didn't, they didn't really know that they needed. Like our offensive line is supposedly supposed to be one of the best in, in, in the league. Now we lost a, we lost a good left tackle. Um, you know, we've had Costanzo retired and everything like that. Um, right. But Kelly, Kelly Smith and Nelson are three, you know, the three pillars of some of our draft classes. They've just not played well. Like Quentin Nelson is who, you know, by all metrics is on his way to being a future hall of famer has been playing like an average guard, which for him, like is terrible for most people. They're fine with it, but for him, he's like supposed to be all world, yeah. he's all world and he is, but he's just not, he's not been playing like it. Ryan Kelly is a pro bowl center has not been playing like brain Smith has not been playing like it. And so, you know, but well, let me ask you this though. Yeah. What are your expectations for Sam Ellinger? It's like for for Texas. I'll, I'll put it from a Texas fan perspective. I agree with you that watching him in preseason and watching him over the last really two preseasons where he's where I've seen him work and, and see yeah. him throw the football, I do see improvement. I see improvement mechanically. Mm-hmm. I believe he looks. You know the the you hear you hear fans and one of the things you know and we we trash talk between fan bases. You guys used to call him a fullback. You're like, hey, we love, you know, Sam's tough, but he's a full, you know, and all this type of stuff. And and one of the things I think Tom Herman and, and that previous regime, they bulked up a lot of their players. And so Sam was playing around 238 pounds. And now with the Colts, he's down around low 220s. And so you kind of see a more traditional quarterback frame. And, you know, he looks faster, looks sleeker. I mean, just the transformation with his mechanics and his body. Similar to Dak Prescott, not saying he's going to be Dak Prescott or anything like yeah. that, but similar to what the transformation Dak went through coming out of Mississippi State mm-hmm. under Dan Mullen. What are your expectations for Sam, yeah. number one? You know, I, I think I expect him to play well the first couple of games just because when you have an unknown commodity, you don't really know how the culture going to deploy him. Um, and he's mobile. So that, like, in any league, whether it's college, you know, high school, college, NFL, defense will struggle with mobile quarterbacks. And that's part of the reason that Matt is out, because he's a statue. Like, he's part of that old quarterback regime, and he's just not mobile like that. Uh, we the know that Sam, line is struggling, too, right, and, and, and line. it's hurting JT. So we got to yeah. get JT going. If you have a mobile guy, maybe yeah. JT has more. It exactly. makes sense. Yep. yep. No, ex- exactly. And, you know, Sam, Sam could get you 20 yards. Easy. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if, if they're if they just going to hand down on the run, do a read option. I mean, <laughs> Sam has that type of ability. And also, even even if something breaks down, Sam can use his legs to make a play. I, I remember watching a play in the preseason. I think it was the other day. Just I was going through some, some more tape. And I, mean, I saw a play he made where he got away. He shrugged off a guy, was running to his left squared his shoulders up, looked up, and he won down the field while taking a shot. And it was right on the money, right? I mean, that that is that's impressive stuff no matter what level you're playing. Um, and so I, I think it gives you hope, um, again, that he can use some of that um, that brashness that he had and, and very much in the, in the sense of, like, how Baker was in college and coming out of college. That's what I see in Sam, like, just – um, being able to grab, have guys gravitate towards him and to be able to lead like that and put his body on the line and make plays. Now, that's something, and we're not, obviously, we're not here to talk about Baker Mayfield, but that's something I think Baker has lost 
through being in Cleveland and through going it as much as he's gone through. But, you know, I think Sam being in this situation where he's not been thrust into this spotlight, he's been able to sit under, you know, Philip or not Philip River. Was he there? Did he get drafted in 20? No, it was Carson. It was Carson. Um, yeah, no, it was Carson because last year was his rookie year. Was last year's rookie year? Okay. Yep. So, you know, he sat under Carson. Um, and everything like that. He's he's been a, and Reich Reich. You know, as much people want to say stuff, Reich is a note. You know, a, a noted you know QB whisper play call or whatever. And so he's been able to at least soak in things, learn things. Um, and I'm not, I'm not saying he's Patrick Mahomes, but I'm just saying a la like a Patrick Mahomes did his first year, right? And he's just gotten better. Um, and so to this point, you're just going to kind of say, hey, what can he give us, right? What can he give us? Clearly, he's done. He did enough to not only warrant staying on the roster in the preseason because, you know, pre preseason, he wasn't being talked about as being a factor. Then he has preseason, right? Nick Foles is there as, as the backup. That's who you think, oh, you know, he, he's been uh, with, with Reich before. He won a Super Bowl, Reich. He knows the offense, everything. Else. Sam supplanted him. And so it's like, what is Sam doing? in practice or what do they see in Sam that he's going to supplant a guy that has years of experience in Reich's offense, right? Like they had to have seen something. You they know have I mean? to have seen something. Yeah. Oh, and, and that's how I feel. I think, I think you're right. I mean, the preseason, the, the juice that you can get. Um, I mean, we're seeing it around the league right now, honestly. And this is something I want to kind of hit on three couple things before we bounce. A, the quarterback play in the NFL has been fascinating this year because it's really down and the tiers are, are kind of messed up right now. Like Mahomes and Josh Allen are playing like Mahomes and Josh Allen normally play. And now really like, if you look at even grades, regardless, you know, if you're using ESPN analytics or PFF or what have you, Geno Smith is like three. Think about this. That's crazy. Geno Smith is like three. And then you have the Herberts who are struggling. Burrow has woken up. Mm -hmm. Joe Burrow woke up. So he's back. But Brady looks old. Yep. Struggling to get in the end zone. They don't, Tempe doesn't even get in the end zone this past week. Aaron Rodgers, they've lost three straight games to the Giants, the Jets, and the Commanders. And he's struggling to get – he's struggling to throw for more than 200 yards. Matt Ryan just got benched. Looks washed. I hate saying saying these things, but, like, he looks washed. Matthew Stafford now has more interceptions than touchdowns. The quarterback play around the NFL is is a struggle fest just from what we've historically seen. So, you know, I think a lot of people were kind of looking at, okay, some of those things. Transitioning, though, to the college fandom of guys, I've been a college NFL fan my whole life. And I've always looked at it like, especially when I played high school sports, there's dudes you went up against at your rival school who you hated for for three or four years because they were good or just they got under your skin or whatever. And a lot of guys end up going to college and you end up playing with those guys. Yep. that used to be on the other side. And I've, I've, that's kind of how I've learned to wire it for me. For example, C.D. Lamb, a Dallas Cowboy. C.D. Lamb, you know how hard it was to watch his draft highlight tape on ESPN? <laughs> and it's nothing but Texas brothers around him in the Cotton Bowl, and yeah. he shakes our whole team and gets in the end zone. I still don't know how he scored that touchdown. <laughs> but immediately, once he be once he became a cowboy, my mind then goes to that's the guy I need on my team now in the NFL. Yeah, I want to see you do that on my team now. You, you yeah. see what I'm saying? And like, I, I don't like. Yeah, you know, he can do the horns now. I, I don't care about that stuff. Yeah. But like, at some point, it's like you know Neville Gallimore like is is one of my guys now, right? I mean, yeah. we've had oh you guys on the past where I'm like I don't. I've never been the guy that's like, oh, I hate Jalen Hurts now that he's on my football team. I mean, unless they're a terrible person. But, you know, you get to learn some of these guys. And I think I've been, you know, yourself and other Colts fans, I think you guys will just like the heart and the effort and the will that Sam will have. I think 
if he doesn't perform the way you think he will, it's only because of physical limitations, not because he's not prepared. Yeah. And that's one thing I will will say in terms of what you can expect from from Sam. I know he's going to compete his ass off. I feel good about that. But yeah. um, I know it's tough. It's tough, you know, rooting against the guy for four years. And then now he's your quarterback on Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a tough mental switch. But what are your thoughts there, man? Have, have you been through that before? Or, or yeah, what, no, I mean, you, this is this is really the first time I'm in a position having to do that. I can't think of a single prominent Texas player that has been a part of the Colts before. Um, you know, I, I remember when Vince Young came in, and you know, when I was um, that in mid two thousands, me and my dad had season tickets to the Colts. And so I remember him, him coming in, but I was still cheering against him because he was also now on the division rival. Right. And so like I was still cheering against him, but I I knew they I knew he could tear us up. And here's where I'm going with this. When Sam came out, I I was not thrilled with us drafting him because I said, like, are we just drafting him to be a career backup? I said that, you can go look at my tweets. Because at the time, that's where I felt like he was in terms of his skill set. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's where I that's what I felt like. Just being honest. I think most people would agree with you in that right. analysis. Just being real. Now mm-hmm. he has heart. He has great leadership skills. I even I you know his when his brother passed away, I was I was one of the main Sooners who championed the long live 48, just saying, look, we need to come together because I believe strongly in that. Um, you know, and so I was like, it's not about football, right? It's bigger than that. And, you know, I think just Sam comes from a great family who's been through a lot, obviously, um, and that he wears it on his sleeve. And, you know, again, if he was an OU guy, you know, we would we probably call him Baker Mayfield. He's probably not as brash as Baker, but, you know, just with the way he plays and his heart and he'll, he'll do anything. Right. And that's why you guys love him in Texas, because he was he was Texas. Right. It's like we love Baker because he was Oklahoma. And so I think, you know, when you have guys like that, that's why I said I felt like Baker fit the city of Cleveland so well because they were blue collar, they were tough, right? And that's how he was. And I would say the same thing about Sam, like, you know, he'll fit Indianapolis so well because, you know, that's kind of what we're about, in, you know, Midwest. Obviously, Indianapolis is a bigger city, but, you know, we pride ourselves on being being Hoosiers, being hospitable, um, being hardworking, you know, hardworking blue collar state in Indiana. You know, that's what they say every, every game, you know, we pound the horseshoe. And every game, you know, Pat McAfee probably does it 70% of the time because that guy's a legend in the city. Uh, funny story, I actually, when I was in high school, um, I used to cross the, so where he got, you remember when he got arrested and got pulled out? Oh, oh wow, yeah, yeah, I so, do, I do. But I haven't thought I about to, that. I had to that. I lived, so Broad Ripple is where, like, it's, it's like, it's where Butler is, Butler University. And so okay. that's like, Broad Ripple is like the college strip or whatever by Butler. And so there's a little canal that goes through it. And so I, I lived near Broderpool, and my uh, school was on the east side of the city. It's actually the same school I'm the athletic di- director for now. Um, so I went out uh, like 6 a.m. We had practices for basketball. And so I'm going. My dad's dropped me off. It's like 545. When I tell you that I missed Pat McAfee by 10 minutes, like I missed him getting pulled out of the river by 10 minutes, bro. And I was so angry. Because they're like, yeah, Pat McAfee, you know, they pulled him out of the river butt, butt naked at 5.35 a.m. And I was like, man, we drove past there at 5.45 a.m. I would have paid, paid so much money to see that. Uh, but <laughs> but anyways, you know, um, anyways, back, back to what I was saying, you know, Sam has that blue-collar, uh, hardworking attitude. And I think he, even in the way he plays, especially the fans will um, definitely enjoy that. Um, and even if he ends up not being the answer or – being able to, you know, have any sustainability, um, I think he'll be able to make plays, um, and, and that'll that'll speak volumes to the fans because we just haven't we haven't seen them. I mean, I mean Carson Carson, you know, Carson tried to make a lot of plays too, but he just ended up making stupid mistakes, you know. Um, and so I, I think if Sam can keep the mistakes low, play with his heart like he does, and you know, I, at the end of the day, I don't think a, a lot of Colts fans are going to have high expectations. And that's no disrespect to him. I just think at this point, you know, you're bringing a guy who we drafted in, I think, that was it the third round or fourth round that you got drafted? Fourth? Uh, he was sixth. Was it sixth? 
He was a sixth round pick. Why did I think he was drafted in the fourth round? So okay, sixth round draft pick then. That that now we are we are elevating and paying less than a million dollars. What what else could you expect? What else could you expect? And if he if he performs great, if he doesn't, I think that's probably what people expected anyway. You know, so I, I think he's playing with house money, and I hope I, he, I hope he balls out. I do, I do. I I I agree. I mean, the other thing too is, and I've said this. I mean, because I think some people are going a little overboard with him, like the limitations, like. We watched Tyler Huntley come out of Utah and play really good football for the Baltimore Ravens last year when Lamar Jackson went down. Yeah. And Tyler Huntley, like, has a job for however long Lamar is there. Like, they will have – because they know if something happens to Lamar, he can run our offense, right? Yeah. Like, we answered that question. Where is he ever going to be a starting quarterback for a long period of time in the league? Probably not, but – at least that is a val- of value. One of our other guys, Colt McCoy, has been in the NFL for you know as a backup that people trust and know. Hey, if I got to play him for an extended period of time, we're going to be okay. We saw that with the Cowboys with Cooper Rush and the sh- yep. little streak he went on. Obviously, we were limited, but it's just competency, yep. especially with what we talked about earlier. JP, bad quarterback play going around across the NFL. I think it was valuable for the Jets that Joe Flacco was a trash when yeah. he played. Yeah. That was valuable for them cuz now they're in the they're they're hanging around in their division. Teddy Bridgewater from Miami hanging around. So, I think there's value in terms of learning with the Colts. Hey, do we have the next Dak Prescott or Jalen Hurts yeah. or do we have the next potentially Tyler Huntley that we can bring back on a modest deal and we still draft or trade for or whatever? our franchise quarterback, but at least we know we'll always have a floor of good quarterback play. That's my goal for Sam. And, uh, you know, if he, if he's more than that, awesome. I I don't doubt him. That's one thing I will say. I don't doubt him and, and, and the power of the mind and everything. One thing I wanted to uh, just leave off with you, brother, what are your expectations? Cause people would be mad if we didn't say anything about Texas and OU. Um, what are your realistic expectations for the rest of how many games you guys have left? Five, four five. or five, five, yep. yeah, these last five games. What, what are your expectations for the, for, for the Sooners? Um, I, I mean, I want to, I want to say I expect to win every game just cause we're Oklahoma, right? Just like, uh, you know, you would say the same thing being Texas, being from schools that we have pride in, um, realistically for me, I would be. I would be happy if we finished three and two down the stretch, just knowing um, the struggles we've had this year. Um, and I think if we can go through this last five games, win, win at least three, I think, again, you're not happy, but you still feel okay moving into year two, um, as opposed to like, we go all in five, then you're like, man, like what's yeah. happening, right? Especially after a bye week, um, we could win all five games. I mean, you know, obviously Iowa State defensively is is cream of the crop. Offensively, not so much. Um, you know, Baylor had a really good game against Kansas. Maybe they're getting back to form. Um, we still got Texas Tech, who you know they're up and down too. But you never know what you're gonna get. Same with West Virginia. Um, and then we got Oklahoma State, and Bedlam. You know, so still good teams left on the schedule. Um, none again that I I would say that we don't have the talent to beat. Um, but again, it's not it's not always about talent, right? It's it's about, you know, what you're gonna produce on the field. Um, so at the end of the day, I think my expectations for OU um would be to win every game, but I would be I would be content if we finish three and two down this five game stretch. That's I mean, especially for the sake of recruiting right and and just having positive momentum um and, and the whole bit so we'll see i mean the the conference i think is going to be crazy down this stretch just with some of these games because we have too many jekyll hyde teams in this conference west mm-hmm. virginia is a jekyll hyde team tech is a jekyll hyde team um kansas you, you know at, i mean <laughs> It's tough, bro. It's tough. I'm, I'm like I said, I'm down bad right now in a bye week. Um, 
after after I thought we were, you know, going to try to be a little bit more consistent as a football program. Hopefully we can uh, yeah. right that ship in the last four games out of the bye week. JP, go ahead and promote your stuff, man. Where can the people find you? Yeah, um, man, thanks for having me on again, brother. Um, at Indiana Sports Sooner, as you see right there below me, uh, that's my Twitter. Uh, go ahead and follow me there. Um, and then uh, me and the homie Travis Davidson, we do a show every Wednesday night at 9.30 p.m. Central Time. So tomorrow uh, we'll, we'll be on there. We do a live stream. Um, yeah, we talk obviously about a lot about OU, uh, but we had some other stuff. You know, we – we also do a game called This or That, where we have a kind of fun prompts that we we talk about, Great including, game. including a food Great one. Game. I, what, do you remember what our food one was? I, I ours was the, onion rings and onion mozzarella, rings and mozzarella sticks. sticks, right? And you said, did you choose mozzarella sticks? I chose onion rings. Onion. Oh no, 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 no. Oh no, I chose no, I chose onion rings. You did. I chose onion rings. You did. Yeah, yeah and you yeah. chose mozzarella sticks. That's right. But we, we talk about a lot of fun stuff. Um, and, you know, we welcome all fans, obviously. Um, and, we you know, we try to have fans on from other teams, uh, especially teams that we're playing that week. And so please come over um, and, and hang out with us. You're, so you're allowed to talk trash, too. You know, we'll talk it back if we need to. Uh, but, you know, yeah, that's uh, that, that's where you can find us. Any sooner on YouTube, that's the that's YouTube channel you can subscribe to. Um, and it's the JP and Trash Show. Um, yep. Man, thank you so much. You guys, please go support go support the brother JP and, and Travis over there. They, um, like myself, I feel like we've always been on the same accord of good, fun, passionate fans supporting their teams, but also grounded in, in, in reality uh, yeah. and understanding <laughs> and, and, you know, A, respect for the opponent, but also understanding that our teams, uh, you know, it's still a roller coaster out here, and yeah. we're gonna, we're not gonna sugarcoat everything or blow smoke where it doesn't belong. So, um, really happy to have them on. Glad we got to have this conversation. If you love QB one, Sam Ellinger, hit that like button. Comment below, Sam's QB one. We're all rooting for him. It's gonna be crazy on Sunday. I think the Colts come to Dallas in December, if they I'm do. not mistaken. They so. Do. We might have to get together um, before then and do a little another little preview thing or yeah. have another segment because um, I'm I'm curious to see how many Ellinger jerseys uh, yeah. and, and fans in the state of Texas they'll be. But yeah. JP, again, thank you so much, brother. Y'all subscribe. Also, make sure you hit up our sponsor, BSR, BSR.com slash fanatic. We just talked about some of these games going on, so much action. Even we got LSU Alabama coming up soon and all this stuff. Man, BUSR.com slash fanatic. If you're looking for a reliable betting partner, don't look any further. Sports 100 FP is the code. 150% off for new players. 100% match on all free play deposits within the first 24 hours plus 25 free casino chips. And if you're rocking with Last Stand Hats, Last Stand Hats family, you know, once you buy anything from them, you're part of the family. LastStandHats.com slash fanatic perspective. Promo code fanatic 10, 10% off at checkout. We got beautiful merch here. We got polos, hoodies, Texas basketball, Texas baseball on the way, Oklahoma State merch, other schools. They Look, their licensing is only growing. Last Stand Hats family is growing. Texas State fans, you know, I, it's crazy. Who knows? At some point, might even have OU on there. I don't know. But LastStandHats.com slash Manac Perspective. Show love. Y'all, horns always up. JP, thanks for being on.